Hey, Nash, what should we make tonight? Well, I met a pig the other day and he made me mad, so let's make pulled pork sliders. <laughs> you, you, want, you want pulled pork sliders because a pig made you mad? <laughs> All right. I guess, babe in the city, let's make some pulled pork sliders. Welcome back to Chaos Kitchen. Today, and I use the term today very loosely because this recipe requires more than just a day. Although I'll, I'll show you a way to make it easier and a little bit shorter, if you so choose. Anyways, we are making some pulled pork sliders. Delicious, delicious for you, delicious for a group of people. If you got a, you know, it's a potluck, party, anything, I'm actually making these to bring to uh, my church group. So without further ado, Let's go. So the first thing we need for pulled pork sliders is pork. So this is a, about a eight, eight and a half, nine pound pork butt. Again, using terms loosely, pork butt. If you see pork butt at the store, butt roast or anything with the word butt in it with regards to pork, it's actually the shoulder. Apparently it's the top of the shoulder. Apparently there is a story behind how it got called the butt, but I don't know, I don't know that story. So anyways, just know that it's called a butt, but it's actually a shoulder. So we have this shoulder, it's a bone in, and this, we're going to sous vide this. It's going to take about 40 hours. You could do 24, but no less. However, if you want to do less than that, we could do a, I'll kind of explain how to do the same thing in a slow cooker. And you could do that in about 12, maybe eight or nine. Anyways, here we go. So first things first, we got this putt. So we are going to just sort of score it. So just think about a bunch of hashtags. And all this is gonna do, look, this, we're just, this thing's gonna become pulled pork at the end, so it doesn't need to look pretty. We're just trying to maximize the surface area for our seasoning and our rub to penetrate. So now that we got that, next thing we're gonna add is a binder. Now look, the binder that we, you choose to use is not gonna really add any flavor. It's just gonna hold the rub there. So we're using yellow mustard. It's not gonna make your pulled pork taste like yellow mustard. It's just going to give us that binding quality to hold our rub in place. Let's get the whole thing covered. Now you just use a barbecue rub of your choice. And this is a big piece of meat, so it can take a lot of seasoning. And I just put this on a rack in a sheet pan. So I'm just gonna kind of, it's called a rub for a reason. Cause you gotta, you know, rub it all around in there. Now we put this into our sous vide bag let's i don't know if this bag is even going to be big enough whenever you're vacuum sealing it's a good idea to fold the top part over just so that you can keep this part clean although we didn't do a very good job but that's okay it'll be fine all right our next step is to cut off the extra, and then we're just gonna vacuum seal this. There we go. So now we put this guy right into our water bath. We got it at 165. And like I said, I know this sounds like a lot, but we're gonna do this for 40 hours. Uh, let's just go ahead and put that guy in there. Several days later. We had a little mishap with our footage. Look, hey, we run a real tight, small ship here. And uh, honestly, trying to get Nash to really get all the the filming stuff and the editing stuff right has is, is been a little bit of a challenge. So, uh, you know, I just just bear with us, folks. But anyways, once your, your 40 hour sous vide cook on your pork shoulder is done, you just go ahead and cut that bag open, drain the juice, and what you're gonna see is something like this. So, do not throw this away. What you wanna do is get rid of this top layer, 
this sort of orangish layer, that's all your fat. So just, you can get rid of that. You can keep it for cooking or whatever you want. But then everything underneath here, this is the kind of sous vide stuff you wanna save on every sous vide cook you do. Because this is gonna make amazing broth. We can use it for a master stock later on. But this is super, super concentrated, super flavorful pork stock at this point. So save this and we can use it for something else later on. All that being said, let me just sort of walk you through some of the stuff we missed with that missing footage. Take your pork, you can literally just use two forks and go If you used a pork butt, that shoulder piece has one bone. It's like a, it's a shoulder blade type bone. So when you're done, if you cooked everything correctly, you should just, that bone should just pull right out. Done. Take two forks, shred it. Unfortunately, by the time I realized that we missed some of the footage, uh, I'd already I'd already given this away to a couple of friends, well, a handful of friends, neighbors, uh, etc. So this is what we got. So once you shred it, place it on a pan with a little bit of oil. Just just it's got so much fat in it, you don't really even need the oil, but a little bit of oil on the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is put your oven on broil real quick. Let's hit this kind of shredded uh, pork with our barbecue rub again. And then let's throw that in the oven, top shelf, under the broiler, oven on broil for literally uh, one to five minutes. You gotta kinda keep an eye on it because it can burn real fast. While that is broiling, let's make it coleslaw. Normally I would have some green cabbage, some purple or red cabbage, and some carrots. But all I have is red cabbage and, and some carrots right now, so I'm just gonna chop up this red cabbage a little bit more than it already is. And again, this is a perfect example of, hey, this is the recipe, but I don't have everything, so I don't wanna make it. You know what? Work with what you got, folks. Because like I've said a million times on here, uh, you know what, this is what I recommend, but if all you have is this, so like onions, for example. Yeah, sure, if a recipe calls for yellow onions, yellow onions might be the best for the recipe. But if all you have is red onions or white onions or brown onions or don't not make the recipe, just use what you got. And you know what? If it tastes like shit, that's fine. You just learned something. Okay, that type of whatever doesn't work in this recipe. So let's chop this up. Like I said, ideally we would have green cabbage, a little bit of red cabbage, and uh, our carrots here for our coleslaw base. We're also going to, because this is pork, you know, pork chops and applesauce, pork and apple go together very well, apple cider vinegar. So we're going to actually grate some apple for this coleslaw. Now you could use a, a bigger grater, like a cheese grater, but the microplane's what I got right now, so this is what we're using. So we're essentially almost making applesauce. Now here's what we're gonna add to make our coleslaw, real simple. Mayo, apple cider vinegar, sugar, salt, and then we have some of our barbecue rub. You could add some of that as well, since that's what we use on our pork. It's only gonna make sense. And again, I would say add all these ingredients lightly first. I'll give you the measurements down below, but add less first, taste it, and then increase the ingredients to your taste, if that makes sense. Some mayo, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar. Stop there, mix it up, taste it, and then see what you think it needs more of. And keep in mind at this point, less is more. We're not making a coleslaw that is, that is supposed to be some sort of a side dish. We're making just a coleslaw to complement our pulled pork on these sliders, so. So for me, I gotta taste this real quick, but this looks pretty darn good to me. So with a quick taste, I would say the sweetness, the creaminess, the acidity from the vinegar, we have a perfect balance. So like I said, start light and then add more, because you can always add more you can never take out. All right, so now we're ready to build. Our pulled pork has been in the broiler. We got these uh, Hawaiian slider roll deals. Get your favorite barbecue sauce or make your own. We will definitely do that down the road. So you can kind of put a little bit on both sides, I would say, top and bottom. Now, if you wanted some more texture, you could absolutely kind of uh, butter, or not butter, the inside of your, your slider buns 
and just hit them on a quick uh, super hot griddle grill or cast iron and get a little bit of texture on the, the inside. So you get that kind of, just add, just add some crispy texture. Now we build. So we take some of this uh, broiler crisp pulled pork that we made, just lay a nice bed there. And again, you know, if, if you don't want that crispy texture added to your, your, uh, your pulled pork, then you could have skipped that step. And as soon as you shredded this stuff out of the sous vide, you could have just built it right there. So we got that layer. Now we're just gonna take just a little layer of our coleslaw here. And again, this just, you know, I don't know, it's a kind of a perfect mixture of flavors. I think it's got a lot to do with the kind of added that acidity. Just, it just kind of cuts the, it cuts all the, the richness from all the fat in this, in this pork cut, but also the sweetness from the barbecue and, and the rub that we used. All right, so we take our, our lids here and we're ready to eat folks or feed the people we're feeding. All right, folks, so that's our pulled pork sliders. I know it was a lot of work, 40 hours in the sous vide. We could have lessened that with uh, doing a crock pot. If you wanted to slow cook, you could smoke it. A lot of different options here, and, I, and we'll probably, we'll, not probably, we will look into some of these other ones down the road. This was just the first one I wanted to do because, like I said, sous vide's easy to get into, and, uh, you know, you don't need a smoker. Crock pot might be even easier, and we can get into that because that might be a little bit quicker. But either way, get into that. Let's take a bite. Here's our delicious pulled pork slider. I mean, what's not to love? Let's get into this. Mm. This is kind of a go-to of mine. This, was no, this wasn't an experiment. You can make pulled pork, like I said, a bunch of different ways. This way definitely works. The richness of the, the pork, the savoriness, of the, the, the seasonings and the spices we use. A little bit of barbecue sauce, you know, that slightly vinegary coleslaw cuts that richness and that fat just, just enough, but also adding and cutting that, I don't know. You know what, it's a perfect marriage of flavors. If you know, you know. If you love barbecue, this is it. You know, if you have the recipe to do it right, do it right. But if not, do it anyways. Don't let that stop you from doing it. So, that being said, let's see what Nash thinks. Sit. Look what we got for you. This is our pulled pork slider. Check it out. What do you think? Oh, that's good, huh? Oh, it's too good to even run away with. Oh, oh, you drops. Oh, you gotta eat. Oh, you're you're eating the vegetables. Can you sit again? High five. Good boy. Nash approves. I approve. Look, it's it's a classic pulled pork slider on a Hawaiian bun. Like, if you've never had it, you really need to go make it like right now. If you have had it, and you, then you probably love it. And again, go make it right now. So yes, I would say 10 out of 10, highly recommend. I think Nash definitely agrees with me. Fairly cheap piece of meat, so just go buy like an eight, nine pound piece, cook it, and then get it all prepared, and then you can give some away, and your friends and your neighbors will think you're an amazing hero because you gave them this most delicious pulled pork that's actually really, really freaking easy to make. So go do that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wouldn't mind taking a second to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to get notified every time I drop a new video. If there's anything you want me to make, you want me and Nash to taste, throw that in the comments, and if it's realistic, we will definitely make it. That being said, just remember, cook more, eat better, embrace the chaos. That's it for now. Till next time, peace.